Some of this with Larry Hess uh, yesterday, the Berkeley County Assessor. Uh, can you give me an idea in regards to home values in Jefferson County? I think you said uh, since the last assessment there was a, a, a 15 to 20 percent increase in home values. Did I understand that correctly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And was that pretty much across the board in the county or were some parts of the county more so than others? Some more so than others. But the overall average was between 15 and 20 percent. And the increases of those assessments, they're not phased in. That's uh, as soon as the value goes up, that's the taxation, correct? Yes. Yes. We have to um, look at market value every year. We have to look at the sales, the open market sales. That is a yearly process. And the personal property tax process, how did that work this year? Well, um, we key in the data, the VIN number, and it gives us the value. Um, the governor in September 2021 signed an executive order number 25-21 that um, he decided then because of how much the used vehicles had gone up, that we would use last the year before values if they were, you know, less than the new values, which they were. So um, they took our computer system, loaded in the values from the year before, and that's how we priced those vehicles for 22. Now for the 2023 tax year, um, we were not instructed to do that. So, um, we keyed it in. We knew a lot of them had gone up. Um, but then the governor has this tax credit that he's offering, and it is on your current bill, the, the 23 tax bills. Um, you need to pay the first half by October 1st, the second half by April 1st. And next year, um, you can take the second half of 23 and the first half of 24 off your taxes when you file your 2024 taxes in 2025. Like I said, you make you need to make sure you pay your taxes timely. So how will the rebate process work this year? Should you pay half of your personal property taxes yes. this year yes. or, or what? How, how does that work? Definitely. You need to pay half by October 1st. If you pay the whole bill, you will not get any credit back on that bill. So you want to make sure you only do the first half. And what's eligible for the credit is the second half of 23 and the first half of 24. Is there adequate explanation on these tax bills that have gone out to make sure that people see that and understand that? Well, it has the dates on those tax bills, but, you know, they are mailed out by the sheriff's tax office. Um, but there are dates on there. I do not know that there's any mention of this um, new tax credit that the gov governor had um, had signed and, and House Bill 2425. I, oh, no, wait a minute. It's House Bill 2526. But, um, you know, there are dates on the bills, and you do have to remember to pay that second half. You're not going to get notice that that the second half hasn't been paid so the taxpayers need to remember to do that matt harvey it, it's definitely not on the tax bill i looked at it uh, last mm -hmm. night in anticipation of today's uh interview um and it's clearly not on there but but there is some information out there um that's available for people to go look at because this has been such a um, boondoggle yeah, it, it, it's, it's been clunky, but, you know, this is rolling out. I think things should smooth out, and the process will just become um, uh, standard going forward. But so just to be clear, the, the car prices went up, but, but for the governor uh, with an executive order, we would have – we, the citizens of West Virginia that have per, that own vehicles, would have paid an increase the last two years, but we were spared from that. Is that correct? Yeah, we were spared from the 22 tax year. Okay. Of an increase 
in the values. And and the prices still went the values of, of vehicles still went up after that. So so that would yes. explain some of uh, why the jump was so dramatic. Yes. Yes. And and then just to be real clear, pay people who like to who are very responsible and like to go ahead and pay their tax bill on their vehicles only uh, that like to there's a there's an incentive to pay your taxes in full to pay early correct well you get that discount on the first half and second half but if you wait and pay your second half you know and pay it by march 1st you get the same discount okay so you're not um paying any more money you're just waiting to pay that second half Right. You just have to remember to do it. You do not want to forget. And what I also want to mention, this is also goes for the disabled veterans who qualify for the um, veterans property credit. Um, if you um, are ninety percent disabled or more by the VA, by the VA, and um, you have to be a resident. This has to be your primary residence in West Virginia, you qualify for a dollar for dollar match on your real estate taxes. And they have to also be paid in a timely manner. And another um, refundable credit is for small businesses. They can get it on their personal property 50%. But it's the same rule. You have to um, pay in a timely manner first half and then your second half and then your other first half and you can take off the first or the second half of 23 and the first half of 24 off your taxes when you file in 2025. So this, hi, this is John. This is a one-off, right? After we're done with this year, um, it gets less tricky. Is that right? So once we're in 24, if I decide I want to pay my, my, taxes all at once in 2024 do i i can then deduct the entirety of the taxes right you get three halves you'll get three um, halves back. you're right. talking about in Octo by october 1st 2024 right so i, I pay yeah. half of it in 23 and then the other half of 23 call it january of 24 and then when i get right. my my next bill in the summer of 24, I can pay the whole thing off and then still, and then deduct that whole amount. Um, so I get three halves not, worth of rebates. I, I've heard that can be done. I, I will not say for sure. I would say the best thing to do is to keep an eye on their website, um, tax.wv.gov. There's also a phone number, 304 558 Three 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 three. There's a toll free number, eight hundred nine eight two eight two nine seven. They also have an email, taxhelp at wv dot gov. And that would be a question I would ask before I paid that full year. That line will and, be busy um, for a the month. Fall, <laughs> yeah, of twenty four. Yeah, Angie, this, this has been such a, a a what's the I think Matt called it clunky. Uh, the rollout of this is more complex than a lot of people think it should have been. Maybe if Amendment 2 was passed, this would have been a lot easier. I don't know. But this sure seems like a stressful way of, uh, of implementing it, I'm sure, both for you folks and for the uh, regular taxpayers who are trying to make uh, something out of this mess. And then you got to throw in the ambulance fee, where you got to read to the belly of your ambulance bill to know it, about the homestead exemption that's not clear we remember we had somebody on the on, yes. on, on the show talking about that as a relative newcomer to west virginia i had to tell you the whole taxation thing is an adventure uh, yeah. <laughs> it's you, you really it's not just writing the check so yes and we do a lot of explaining over the phone by email i think by email a lot of times um it's better because you have it in writing and they can read it again and they seem to understand and comprehend it better. Go ahead, Matt Harvey. And Angie, this is this is not something that's subject to the discretion of the individual assessors in the state, correct? Like correct. The, the percentages the or, or the the bill well the percentage that are taxed. So, um, 
and how it's taxed. So I, I want to talk about property taxes on real estate because um, there's always been confusion uh, about where and, and, and I guess this is the same thing for personal property tax. Let's start there. Let me back up real quick. Where does the money from the personal property tax go? Like, um, does it, it stay it local? All the, yeah. It, well, it goes to all the levy and bodies. Uh, you know, the state gets a very small um, portion of it. It's like, like any. But, you know, our county gets it, and it goes to to the school current expenses, school excess levy, school improvement, and then all of our towns get a portion of the taxes that of the values are that are located in the corporations. They they get a portion of those. So the benefit, or if you want to call it a benefit, but what what is happening here is individuals who own personal property are paying taxes that. On, on these items and it, that money is staying local and the state yes. is rebating what they have they're paying in their local taxes right right exactly we are the way this is set up um we are not the counties the schools nobody we're not losing any money none of the counties are losing money did you get cut off angie or you were you done Angie, did we lose you? I think we lost Angie Banks. Let's, we'll try to get her well, back. And, and where I was going, um, I sat down and looked at my tax bill year, yesterday and uh, did a little, pulled out the calculator. Certainly didn't do this math in my head. And it has a breakdown of where your money goes that you're paying. This was my bill for real estate. And at the, at the state level, the state was receiving 0.4%. These are rough estimates. Uh, the county which is your county commission, mm -hmm. is 22%. Uh, your, your schools receive 32%. Your school improvements, which are your bonds, was 4.6% of your total bill. And the school excess le levy was 38.8% of my bill in Jefferson County. And, and so I would assume for all Jefferson counties that per those percentages are – are equal. similar yeah uh, angie do we have you back yes okay yes, i'm back i'm sorry yeah matt was so unhappy with your answer he, yeah matt was so unhappy that he cut you off he's just like i can't take it anymore yeah, you're done. He didn't like it. are yeah. you are you on 480 are you driving down 480 is that was that the problem yeah i'm out here on persimmon lane i haven't left yet but yes there is definite there's more than one dead spot there's a one I, I know where she lives and it, we drive the same yeah. road and it's it's you just can't get cell phone service now i want to ask you there there was a question you had about uh some stuff that was said yesterday during this segment matt harvey and, we, and angie Hess in regards to who can get a rebate and who can't yeah there was some there's information that's on this west virginia tax division this tsd 454 form that they have put out which is has a lot of helpful information about you you don't have to owe west virginia taxes to claim this rebate is that correct angie what was your question again? It, you don't have to owe West Virginia taxes, oh, state exactly. taxes, to get yeah, to you claim do the not rebate. Have to owe, and you are not. And let's say um, you do not. Let's say you don't owe any West Virginia income tax, and you're not required to file a West Virginia tax return. But you will be able to claim a rebate in early 2025. And they say basically right now is to continue to keep an eye on tax.wv.gov because they'll be getting up information how you can still claim your money for tax rebate. Now, so the our personal property tax, taxes and our real estate taxes, they're not the – those are formulas that are in code, correct? As far as tax rates? Correct. I mean, everything's assessed at 60%, and um, there are um, maximum rates in the code. And what discretion does the county commission have on setting taxes or raising taxes or lowering taxes, if they have any at all? 
Right, right. Well, they can only collect so much over last year's budget, like 1% plus my assessor's bill. So, um, you know, because the values went up last year and this year, both years, the levy rate rolled back. Now, they could have had a public hearing and not rolled the, the rate back. But, you know, they did not do that. They rolled the rate back. Um, so, you know, our county commission sat under that and all of our um, corporations. Now, the school, the only rate that rolled back with the school um, is was the improvement, you know, because we're paying on a school bond. That rate was lowered because those bonds go down as you pay on them. Um, the school does have the discretion to roll back their excess levy rate, but they they have not chosen to do. Did we lose you again, Angie? I'd say for several years they haven't, and even though values went up a good bit this year. And then the current rate is set by our legislature. And it has, it has been staying the same. Angie, we're going to... That's the whole state, but go ahead. We have about two minutes left. If you get your tax bill and you can't afford to pay it, do you have any options? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. It's very unfortunate because with all of this that has passed, there's nothing more for the senior citizens. And in the growth counties, such as Jefferson and Berkeley, Morgan... You know, the, they, they're they only getting a um, $20,000 assessment off their real estate, which amounts to around $240. I don't think that's fair because it's the same amount throughout the state, and not all the counties are growing or their values are going up. So I really think this needs to be looked at. Something needs to be done for our senior citizens. Is there an association of assessors in the state where you address yes. these things with legislators? Yes, yes, and we've, we've talked talk about that. I have personally sent out emails. I think the problem is, is getting Charleston to agree what would work statewide. Because, like I said, some counties at 20000 assessed value, if you're on Homestead, you don't pay any taxes in some of the counties because that covers your tax bill. But as you know, in Jefferson County, you know, our average value on a house, our average value now is around 350000 So when you take 60% of that and then take um, the 20000 assessed value off, and it does not help out a whole lot. It's better than nothing, but it does not do much for um, our senior citizens. Is that the most expensive housing market in the state, Angie? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we have been at the top the past. I would say the past 10 years we have been at the top. Well, perhaps we need to rework this so that the homestead exemption applies to a percentage of the value of your home instead of exactly. a flat dollar amount. I, totally I think you'll have the same resistance as you do with locality pay. I'm sure you Why will. Why should we give the rich people in Jefferson and Berkeley County a, a bigger break? That's that's what I, what, well, what I would say if I was down south. Well, if it's a percentage, then it's a constant. Yeah. I know. But so, yeah. Yes, and it would adjust as values go up or values go down. It makes perfect sense to me because the 20000 assessed value homestead, that, that happened in the 1980s and has not increased since the 1980s. And the values weren't hardly anything on the book. And even our senior citizens in Jefferson County were paying very little taxes on their real estate, if any, during that time. Uh, Angie, thanks so much for your time this morning. We, as always, uh, we very much appreciate uh, our guests with expertise who are able to share information. Hopefully that uh, clarifies some issues, and I uh, appreciate yours today. Thank you so much. 